All right. So, hello. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to lecture four of uh, mathematical method. In today, I've been talking about uh, about right, and we are on the topic of group representation. Okay, and so what I have uh, conveyed to you so far, I hope, is the fact that a group is an abstract object, and uh, it comes into being, so to speak, only when we uh, uh, describe on what space does it act, right? So a group is a set of transformations, but the question is the transformation of what, right? So when we uh, uh, we have to choose that what, right? So in the case of the groups that we're talking about, we're talking about transformations of vector spaces, right? And uh, so depending on the choice of your vector space, your group has a trans has a representation, right? Which acts on that vector on that vector. So representations can be of two kinds. Uh, they can be reducible or irreducible. Okay, so what, what is, uh, have a representation which is reducible or irreducible? So for this, uh, we need to uh, talk about the concept of a direct sum. Now I had started explaining this to you in the last class, right? Uh, that the direct sum of a vector space, right? So you know what the direct product is. I hope that all of you remember that from um, our first semester on quantum mechanics. The direct sum of, 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 uh, of two vector spaces is another vector space, right? Whose dimension is the sum of the two dimensions, right? M plus N. And so if you have two matrices or two operators, right? So that's what this notation represents. This says, this is the set of operators which acts on V1 direct sum V2. Similarly, this is the set of operators which acts on V2. So let me just, just put a little note here. This is the set operators acting on V, right? So it will basically just be uh, the set of uh, m by m or n by n matrices, right? Where n is the dimension of your vector. So if you take um, any two uh, such operators, one acting on V1 and one acting on V2, right? The direct sum of those two matrices can be written as this combination, right? Where the first m by m element is the matrix m, and then the next n by n element is the matrix n. And over here, we just put zero, right? In these elements. And what about uh, the, the, how do we write down the, L, uh, the, the vectors, which are the direct sum? So for instance, uh, so again, this may say direct sum of two vector spaces. V2, so we have some V3, direct sum, right? And then if you have a vector, which is in V1, right? And a vector which is in V2, then how do you construct the direct sum? So let's write down the dimensions of these vector spaces. Right, so V1 is going to be something which has M elements. And V2 is something which has going, which is going to have N elements, right? So the vector, which is the direct sum of V1 and V2 
is simply the vector which has the first m elements are the are the components of v1 and the next n elements are the components of v2 okay right so you just you just stack them on top of each other right so this way you can see that if you 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 can always take a third vector space right you can take the direct sum of as many vector spaces as you like right? if you want right so just stack vectors on top of each other right now let's say we have some um some operator some matrix uh, which acts on the first vector space right and then some operator which acts on the second vector space so what happens when you act with m on v1 you get some new vector v1 prime which is again an element of v1 okay, of the vector space big v1 and same thing for n v2 gives you v2 prime is an element of the vector space v2 okay so and now we have this direct sum of these two vectors v1 plus v2 right so what is the operator which should act on the direct sum the operator which should act on the direct sum is this guy right this guy acting on v1 direct sum v2 will give you right direct sum in v2 right and what is this this is just v1 prime 1 v1 prime m v2 prime 1 v2 prime m. right so you have vectors you are stacking them for each other and the transformation this kind of a transformation keeps the vectors stacked on top of each other right so you can you can think of it like this you can if you want to write in a short form you can just write it in this way right you can just put the vectors on top of each other like okay now what does all of this have to do with uh, groups and representations and so on okay uh, uh, and also please if you have any questions please stop and ask me okay if something is not clear at any point now what is the what is the group to what are, what do the elements of group what is the representation right so we can have different representation right of, of any given group so let's say we have two representations of some group g one on v1 and the other on v2 right so i have explained this before that uh that for instance uh waiting for the screen to up update when you when i change the screen too fast uh zoom uh takes a little bit of time to catch up uh am i still connected yeah i'm still connected okay. Right. So, as I explained 
earlier if you have uh, as an example of this right you can have a spin one half system which consists of this uh, qubit right or you could two dimensional vector space or you can have a three dimensional vector space right and you can have the group of rotations which acts on this this space in this case this will consist of 3 by 3 matrices and if you have the group of rotations acting on this space it will it will be a set of 2 by 2 matrices right so this will give you a two dimensional representation this will give you a three dimensional representation right but the main point is that there are two representations of the same group right Okay. So, what is to update again? It will be so. All right. Am I am I audible? Can somebody please tell me if I'm still connected and audible? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yeah, as so I'm going back to this old method of uh, keeping my audio connected to the tablet. Okay. So we have two representations of um, and I'm going to switch my thing. So just give me a second. Okay, so what do, what does this mean? So this means the following, right? For all elements, small g in this group, big G, right? We have, there exists, right? A matrix or an operator, which acts on V1, right? So you can represent it schematically like this. This is the group, right? And these are your two matrices, let's say, or, or vector spaces V1 and V2, right? So, and here you have a group element G. So G will have, will, will correspond to an operator, right? Which acts on V1. Uh, let's call that U1G, and then there will be an operator which acts on V2. We'll call that U2G, right? So what will U1G do? U1G will act on vectors which are in the first vector space and transform them. What will U2G do? It will take vectors which are in the second vector space and transform them. And the dimension of these, these are matrices. So these are M by M dimensional matrices, right? So I can just say M U to G is equal to N, right? And what does it, what does it mean when I say that these are representations of the group, right? It means the following, that if you have, two elements of this group, right? Then what will happen? You will have U1 of G1 
and u2 of g2 okay now i mean i i think instead of uh, calling this 1 and 2 i'll call these group elements a and b so yeah that's better because otherwise there's scope of confusion right so you have u1 of ga and u1 of gb right this is the first representation so if you multiply these two matrices what you should get is u1 of ga product gb right or actually i should be a little bit more careful what will be the order of uh, the product of the elements in this uh, well it will be gag yeah and similarly right so this is the criteria that these are representations because they satisfy the group multiplication property okay now as an example right we'll consider we'll consider the group of rotations let's say in in four dimensions okay and i'm not introducing four dimensions because i want to scare any of you or i want to make your life more complicated than it needs to be uh this is because it it is you can see how this uh, reducibility and irreducibility comes about when you look at this four dimensional matrix so what do i mean by group of rotations in four dimensions right so if you have a vector a four dimensional vector right it has four components x y z and w right and so a rotation uh is what it's a 4 by 4 matrix right it's a 4 by 4 matrix and since it's a rotation what are the properties of the matrices it has to be um it's uh it has to be so4 right what is what is o this means that the matrix is orthogonal and s means that it's special that means it has determinant so orthogonality is this condition and special is the condition that the determinant is equal to 1 okay so it's a 4 by 4 matrix now when i take this matrix right and i uh so this matrix is what it's a representation of this group so4 right so the way i should write this is the following i should write it like this r of g right where g is a element of so4 so this is a four dimensional representation right and this is the fundamental representation of so4 okay now anyways we are not concerned we are not concerned about about uh, whether this is so4 or what uh, my point is something slightly different which is the following so if i take r of g and act on a, on this vector i get some new vector which has some new components right okay and in fact all of this all of this is not important for this discussion okay none of this is important the only thing that matters is that this is some 4 by 4 transformation which acts on this vector. that's it. now in general these new components that i have x y x prime y prime z prime and w prime right they will be some linear combinations of the old set of components right x y z and w okay but let's say that r of g right this matrix r of g is block diagonal okay 
And what does block diagonal mean? That these elements are non-zero, everything else is non-zero, right? So these are the diagonal blocks. These are the blocks. This is one block. This is another block. And they are along the diagonal, right? You could also have a have a block. It doesn't have to be like this. It can also be a, a, a three by three block and a one by one block, okay? Just so the blocks don't need to be of the same size. I just want to emphasize that. So if your matrix is of this form, then what can you say about its action on, on this vector V, right? What will happen? This, this matrix R of G, when it acts on this vector V, right? It will give us some new vector, right? But you can see from the form of this matrix, right? That these two elements, X and Y will map into X and X, Y prime and Y prime. And these two elements will map into Z prime and W prime. Right, and the mapping would be given by this, by these four elements here, and by these four elements. So just take a moment to convince yourself that, that what I'm saying is, is correct. Right, so when I multiply, when I take this matrix and multiply it by this vector, right, only this block, this two by two block, only this will act on the first two components. Everything else here is zero. Similarly, only this two by two block will act on these elements, right? Okay, so what is happening, right? What is happening is that now you can see that our original vector, right? Our original vector, x, let me, let me a little bit more neat in my writing. Our original vector can be written as two vectors, right? V1 and V2, where V1 lives in a vector space V1, which I call V1, and V2 lives in a vector space V2. This has dimension two, and this has dimension two, right? And, and so I can write my original vector as a direct sum of these two vectors, right? which is an element of the direct sum vector space. Okay. So now imagine that this original four by four matrix, right? Is the matrix representing, which represents one second, which represents, which, which is a representation of some group, okay? Now, let's say that I have another, another uh, element, G. So I have two elements now, let's say G1 and G2 belonging to this group. So then I will get two matrices, right? RG1 and RG2, right? And both of these matrices are also going to be block diagonal. So RG1 
is block diagonal, right? And R two R sorry not R two G R G two is also a block diagonal matrix, right? So these are we are talking about the same four dimensional representation. But now when you multiply these, right, you will get a third matrix according to the group multiplication property. But now what one can see is that if you take these two block diagonal matrices and you multiply them with each other, right, the third matrix that you get will also be block diagonal. Right now, now if this is not clear to you just by looking at the two matrices, one way to view understand this is the following: you start with some vector like this, you act on this vector with one block diagonal matrix. What happens? these two sets of components transform independently right so this goes to uh, v1 goes to v1 prime v2 goes to v2 prime right now you act on the transformed vector so let me let me let me show that to you so if you have r g1 and it acts on your vector v right so your vector v is the direct sum of these two vectors. This gives you a direct sum of these two vectors, V1 prime and V2 prime. And uh, let me say RG2 acts on this first, okay? Then RG1 acts on the second vector, on the transform vector, right? It acts on it acts on V prime. V prime is, what is V prime? This is V prime, right? It consists of these components. So again, uh, just to be extra careful, let me just define this. This is V prime. And you get a third vector, which I'll write as V1 double prime, And V2 double prime, right? which I'll write as V double prime. Right? So I can write this as following RG1, RG2 acting on V. Right? Now, according to the group multiplication property, this is going to be R G1 G2 acting on V, right? Now you can see from the first from the first statement that this make this vector V prime is a direct sum, right? That's why I've written it in this way. Then when I multiply it by a second matrix, which is block diagonal, I get another direct sum, right? So the final vector I get V double prime, right? Is this, has this direct sum form. And this final vector, so, and, and this total operation can be written as a single matrix acting on V, right? So this implies, that if V is an element of V1 direct sum V2 and V double prime is also an element of V1 direct sum V2, 
then R G1, G2. is block diagonal. It has to be block diagonal, right? Okay. So the whole point of all of this is to say, say the following. You have some, you have some represent, you have a representation of some group on some vector space, right? Which originally is this four dimensional vector space. But what is happening is that each transformation only acts on some subspace, right? So each group transformation, it acts only on X, Y prime or only on Z prime W prime, right? So what we can say is the following, right? We can take our, our original matrix, which is our block diagonal matrix now, right? And we can write the upper two by two block as R A G, right? and the lower two by two block as RBG. And what, what do we have? RAG and RBG are both reps of my original group, right? These two have to be representations of my original group. Why is that? Because let me take again my four by four matrix and multiply two of these like this, right? Now from the block diagonal property, what we can see is the following, right? So I can write this is the first matrix multiplied by the second matrix. Right? The result is again block diagonal right? And I know from the group multiplication property from this property, that this is equal to R G1, G2, right? And I know that this has to be equal to R A G1, G2, R A G1, G2, right? Okay, one second. one mistake here. So when I multiply these two matrices, what will happen is that the block diagonal components will multiply. And I leave you to the space. And I will get, here I will get in the upper block, I will get Ra G1 multiplied by Ra G2, right? In the lower block, I'll get Rb G1 multiplied by RB G2, right? But from the group multiplication property of the original matrix, I know that RA, I know that RG1 G2 is equal to RG1 times RG2 is equal to RG1 G2. And so this upper block should correspond to R of A, G1, G2. And the lower block should correspond to R of B, G1, G2. So what does this tell me? This tells me that R of A, G1, G2 is equal to R of A, G1 
times r of sorry a g2 and the same thing for the second matrix r of b g1 g2 is equal to r of b g1 r of b g2 right what does this tell what does this tell us right this tells us that r of a and r of b are representations of my group because these matrices are also obeying the group representation of the group multiplication problem right and so we we say that r is reducible and we can write r in this way where r a is also a representation r b is also a representation now this is a four dimensional representation this is a two dimensional representation this is a two dimensional representation and so this object this this r is a four dimensional representation which is reducible into the sum of two two dimensional reps okay this is what it means to say that a representation is is reducible now what would it mean if if you say that a representation is irreducible what is irreducible then irreducible means that your representation matrix is do not have a block diagonal form right so that means that if you cannot take your represent your representation matrices and put them in this block diagonal form what does that mean okay again think about it physically it means in this case it means the following right it means that these vectors when i perform this rotation v1 and v2 will mix into each other so i cannot write v1 prime as something which acts only on v1 right and i cannot write v2 prime as something which acts only on v2 so all of the if i don't have this block diagonal form that means that all of these components will mix with all of the other components right now this brings us to a third notion which is the following sin e polarity transforms the equivalence of two different representations under similarity transformation what is the what is wh why is this important now remember that whenever you have a vector space right given a vector space right and you say that your elements of the vector space can be written in terms of components like this let's say right what are we doing we are implicitly we are choosing a basis right so this involves
a choice of basis right of orthogonal basis vectors so in this case what are our basis vectors we would write our e1 for instance as 1 0 e2 as 0 1 right and then em oh. as this vector right so this is this this is our basis vector right these are our basis vectors this is one choice but the thing is you can always have a different choice of basis vectors right so i can always have a change of my basis vectors right how do i have a how do i perform a change anybody how do i change my uh, basis vectors what sort of transformation does that involve anybody so unitary unitary in the case of complex vector spaces right and when your vector space is real then the unitary condition would become what would it be orthogonal right so that means there is some there is some unitary or orthogonal matrix i'll just call it a unitary matrix because when when the vector space is real unitary will reduce to orthogonality unitary matrix u okay and now for simplicity i am going to perform a active transformation right so what is an active transformation in an active transformation it is the vectors which transform rather than the basis vectors right so each vector v is rotated into another vector v prime okay now how do operators so if you have any operator on this vector space the operator should also transform in some way right so if i have r some operator r right and one second i'll um instead of calling this v prime let me call it w so if you have some operator r which acts on this on this vector space right so this is a operator which acts on you know acts on a vector give you another vector under u what will happen is you will get another operator r let's call it r prime which is related to the first one in the following way u r prime u inverse okay and this is called a similarity transformation okay now i know that you guys have another class that is coming up right but i just want to take a few more minutes just to finish up this discussion okay so what happens under the similarity transformation right let me take r prime my new matrix and act on the vector w right which was the vector which had transformed earlier and again um, i'm being uh very flaky with my conventions 
So let me just call this V prime. So let me take R prime and act on V prime. What will I get? This is R prime, right? What is V prime? U acting on V. When I multiply this through, what will happen? I will be left with U acting on R acting on, right? Okay, so what what is this? What does this tell me? This tells me the following. I take my vector space and I act with this unitary operator, right? I get the same vector space, right? Of course. But then I act on this with some operator R, which is some some matrix R. I get the same vector space again. Now, the statement is the following. That after I transform the vector space with, with the action of R, let me again transform it under the action of U. Then you have this fourth arrow. What should this fourth arrow correspond to? This fourth arrow corresponds to R prime. Okay. Sir, excuse me. So this is what is called a. Excuse me, sir. Yes. So, so why you uh, inverse in the bottom? Why not you inverse in the bottom? Where? In the in the in the bottom in the bottom, bottom row in this uh, one. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, because uh, because what I'm saying is. So you have some vector v, right? R prime is some matrix, right? This gives me some vector W, okay? So what I require is the following, that when I change my basis, under change of basis, what will uh, yes, happen, so, right? Okay, so, okay, so, got it. We will go to V prime. W will go to W prime. R will go to R prime. And all of these should satisfy what condition? That R prime, V prime should be equal to W prime, right? And so this is like a consistency condition, right? Because if this condition is not satisfied, uh, then that means your your uh, this operation has broken something. No? It has changed something fundamental about the vector space. So for this for this to be satisfied, right? We should require the following: that R prime V prime is equal to U acting on W which is what, which is you acting on R, acting on V, right? So if you, if you go to this, that is what you have here. R prime acting on V prime is equal to you acting on R acting. Now, the reason I mentioned this whole similarity transformation thing is the following. A matrix can be block, diagonal, or, or, or diagonal, right? It doesn't, I mean, block diagonal is just a more general form. In one basis, but not in another, right? So if you have a representation which is reducible, which looks reducible in one, one basis, right? Now I perform a change of basis. 
does my does my representation become not reducible or not by not block diagonal i mean the my matrices will no longer be block diagonal but the representation will still be reducible so this is the point a representation is reducible if the corresponding matrices can be made block diagonal by a suitable similarity transforms okay anyway i think this is more than enough for today i'll stop here sorry for going over the limit a little bit okay and uh, if you have any questions please tell me okay so it takes a little bit of thinking and a little bit of time to understand this whole concept of reducibility and so on and so forth okay it is not something which is like completely obvious uh so if you find yourself confused that's okay but the main thing is that you have to you have to study this you have to understand it if you want to uh and you will you will gain an intuition for this but it takes a little bit of time okay all right so any questions please tell and if not then uh well i will see you all tomorrow at 11 or 11 or 5 or something like that okay okay bye bye thank you sir